Are you optimizing the tax shelters that are available to you? Do you have a tax shelter strategy? You have a real life case study, that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Do you have a tax shelter strategy? What a geeky, what a geeky thing to say. But essentially, have you objectively analyzed the 401k options, pre-tax, Roth, whether you should be funding an IRA, Roth IRA, other advanced strategies, HSA, 529 plans? Have you looked at all at your financial goals? in all six areas of your financial life, and then the tax shelters that are available to you so that you can build wealth and save up for those goals in a tax advantaged way. And do you have a clear objective strategy for doing so? That's part of the job of your certified financial planner. Everyone has six areas to their financial life, you, me, everyone, and tax planning is one of them. Now, you can come up with all sorts of creative tax planning strategies, but if you don't have the resources in your present financial position or the right goals in your retirement plan or the right, you know, the right amount of dollars in your investment, investment plan, then it might not make sense. So, so coming up with that strategy or the, the, the available strategies, but determining what are the right ones to implement Gosh, that's right at the center of the six areas of your financial plan, uh, of your financial life, right where your CFP is there to help you. Recently had a, a, new, uh, a new couple start a relationship with our firm and I'm changing some of the facts here to, to, uh, to, to sort of make sure everything stays confidential and all that, but, um, but it's really an ideal uh, illustration of why you need a, well, CFP in your life doing comprehensive financial planning, but someone that is helping you craft and optimize the right tax shelter strategy. So here's a scenario. They're in their mid sixties. They've got good income, uh, significant income. And, and, um, he, they both work. He makes about $300,000 a year and, uh, they've got a total of about 200 or excuse me, 2 million saved up for retirement. 1.5 of that 2 million is in his 401k pre-tax is what he's been saving into because they've got good income. They've been, they've needed that tax, uh, that, that tax savings. He's the primary breadwinner, obviously with that sort of income. But like I said, they, they both work and they came to us because they've never had a comprehensive approach to their finances and they're just about to retire. They're hoping to retire in the next year or two and wanted that comprehensive view to make sure that they were approaching, that they were, they were doing everything that they needed to and that they're, uh, you know, going to be able to transition into retirement in, in the, in, in the best way possible. So guys, we've, we've started serving them. Our team of advisors have, have met and we're, we're working with them and there's all sorts of stuff that, that we'll be doing as well as you know, helping them figure out uh, getting on to, to Medicare, the right time to, to draw Social Security, so how to optimize that for their situation, Roth conversions and all sorts of creative strategies. They also don't have wills or estate plans in place, so figuring out, well, do you need a trust and, and, and what, uh, what, what's the right structure for your estate plan? So, oh my goodness, all sorts of ways that we're gonna be able to help them through comprehensive financial planning. But specifically what stood out, when our team of advisors met to, to evaluate their case and explore all areas of their financial life and what issues they needed help with, what really stood out was the lack of a clear tax shelter strategy. It really presented, we could see three very clear issues with what they'd been doing really all of their career up until the point they're at right now. The first issue without having this clear tax tax planning, tax sheltering strategy was I'd shared, they had good income. And so uh, he was funding, max funding his 401k and was doing so pre-tax. Well, fantastic. Here's the problem. She's been working as well. And as often as the case, the primary breadwinner, they feel like, well, their income is the largest and it's their responsibility to be saving up for retirement. And the other spouse, they, aren't making as much and therefore they can't afford to be saving into their 401k. So as it turns out for decades now, he's been shoveling as much money as possible into his 401k. She doesn't have a balance in her 401k at all. 
she hasn't been funding it because she's primarily worked part time. And again, that that cash or that income that she's been earning has been seen as sort of side and and not part of their overall financial picture. Guys, yeah, that presents a significant opportunity or obstacle. They should have been, and, and we're presenting to them that for the, the, for the remainder of their careers, they should be funneling as much money as possible into her retirement plan as well, her 401k as well, to try to get as much money cumulatively for the family invested into tax shelters. We've been doing this long enough for several clients and, and you know, uh, th because this isn't an isolated incident where folks that have a disproportionate amount of the household income being earned by one individual. This is a common challenge or common obstacle where they view it as, well, I'm, I can afford to save up into the 401k, but the spouse making a lesser amount can't. Where we will tell that spouse making a smaller amount, maybe they're only earning 10 grand or, or 20 grand, save 100% of your paycheck into your 401k defer all of it. And I know like I, I joked and said, we're going to uh, have like a support group for those who go to work and don't take home any income because they all save it up for retirement. But it's not that, well, your income isn't needed for the family, but more so it's, well, do you guys have enough cash flow coming in to meet your present financial planning needs? Yeah, we do. The, this other income over here, that's just extra. And, and the individual that's working in it loves what they do and they're passionate about it. Well, yeah, so what are your tax shelters available to you? I, I'm sure if the maximum 401k contribution for his income was double, well, he would contribute that amount because he's got the income to do it. So therefore, having her max out and contribute as much as she possibly can to her 401k plan, that's a big problem that they haven't been addressing and a solution that we're encouraging them to start. And then the second problem or, or obstacle that, uh, that, that we saw as we were evaluating their situation is, yeah, with his income, they, they don't spend you know, near that amount. So they've been maximizing the 401k contributions for him, but then extra dollars as they would have it, either from a big commission or from a bonus, would actually just be diverted. They've got a friend of theirs that's been helping with their finances, but he's not a certified financial planner. And, uh, and hasn't been doing comprehensive financial planning. So it's just been helping them with their investments. And so they've thrown chunks into a, just an, a joint investment account, a non-retirement investment account. And so much so that of the 2 million that they've saved up, about 1.5 is in the 401k, but another half million or so is in this non-retirement non account. Some of you that are daily listeners to The Wise Money Show, uh, you might already see the strategy, but that means they're not funding IRAs. In fact, they don't even have them. They make too much money to fund a Roth IRA directly, but nothing's stopping them from actually contributing the maximum amount to traditional IRAs. They make too much to be able to deduct it, so they can't deduct it, but then they could uh, later, they could then convert those dollars from the IRA to the Roth. You might recognize this as a backdoor Roth IRA strategy. Absolutely something that they should have been doing for, gosh, the past decade or, or so, and definitely something that we're going to work with them and have them do for the rest of their career. And then the final part of their, their tax shelter strategy that we've we're helping them implement, but they haven't had for decades now, is they've always viewed that they're saving up a chunk of, of finances such that they want to bless their kids and their grandkids. And, and actually, um, one of their goals is, can you ensure that our financial situation, our retirement plan, is set up very well where we won't need to spend through the principal and we'd like to position a chunk of these dollars to bless grandkids. And, uh, and therefore, a tax shelter strategy that they haven't been considering that is going to be part of the strategy we're helping them with is funding a 529 plan for grandkids. Not, what, not with the goal of paying for 100% of their grandkids' education, but maybe paying for some of it, or maybe one year, or helping with room and board, or helping with just books even. But doing so and having some awareness of that will allow them to shelter and transition some of their dollars that they've already said is a goal of theirs to, to not need to live off of in their lifetime and start transitioning a little bit of those, a palatable amount, 
each year as it makes sense into a 529 plan for grandkids where these folks continue con to control the dollars. They own the dollars. They're in, in charge of how the dollars are invested. But more importantly, or as importantly, they get a tax benefit as they make the contribution into the 529 plan. Additional bonuses, those dollars in the 529 plan are outside of their estate. So should the uh, should the IRS or should Congress change the estate tax laws? They've got some dollars that are under their stewardship, but are sitting outside of that federal estate tax uh, exemption and, and, and limits. So do you have a clearly defined tax shelter strategy? It's going to be part of your tax plan, which is part of your comprehensive financial plan. So make sure you're working with your certified financial planner. We're talking thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands of dollars over your career that could be slipping through your fingers and going to Uncle Sam needlessly if you don't have the right tax shelter strategy. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, Corhorn.com. That's Corhorn with K, wise20show.com. You can find us there as well. Or send us an email, info at Corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.